this is part two of uh, the interview with uh, Michael Benzer here and uh, here for his story um, about Tonic Structure, the band that was formed uh, in 2010. Um, whether or not that would be the name that still holds today, uh, it might not, not be exactly. Sure about exactly. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, the musical reference and the musical styles that we've had have altered quite, uh, dramatically uh, within the course of time, yeah, within the time periods that we have had, uh, recording, uh, sessions. And with those sessions in mind, I mean, there have been times that, uh, there have been, um, a lot of things that we haven't re even recorded that sounded, you know, terrific, but, uh, that was due to our own incompetence at the time, and uh, uh, I suppose if we did have an actual studio, you know, all this stuff would be down on <laughs> recording right away, and uh, we wouldn't have the worry of feedback, or uh, uh, we'd have different line-ins, and we'd have it directly, you know, put on the computer instead of uh, recording the guitar analog. Um, like, uh, I mean, nobody should record analog uh, anymore, <laughs> but... We still do. That's all. That's all we really got. That's all we got, man. And um, basically, at that, Michael, mm -hmm. um, with your uh, creative style coming in, and uh, we've been really uh, pushing the envelope, right? Where yeah. uh, lately the um, the band hasn't really come together as well as probably both of us would like it to be, but that's how life goes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're Getting stuff together, that's all that really matters. Yeah, exactly. you got to get your life together before, you know, you become famous. Otherwise, what what's going to be in the long run? You know, you know, if you don't know anything else about getting your life together, it's going to turn into a big old pile of stinky shit. And at that, don't quote me on that. <laughs> and truthfully, with my life, <clears throat> with my life, I mean, you've already known with, um, I've had drug addiction problems in the past, but... Um, I feel that, uh, if we would become a studio band, that, uh, I would have no problem, you know, being able to get that to the side and, um, be able to get the, the actual music and the emotion through with the song and with our lyrics. I feel that we wouldn't have any problem, you know, uh, getting the emotion out onto a beautiful stream of music. Right. Right. And, uh, do you have anything to say? Uh, all the things to say. Not really. <laughs> Just in general. About, the, about how we came together? Oh, yeah. Hey. <laughs> well, me, me and Corey kind of met by chance. Oh, yeah. On the school bus. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he said he was going to make a band, and I kind of showed him what, what I had to offer, and he liked it, so I ended up joining the band. Well, no, it wasn't just that. I mean, it was... Uh, at, at first, I didn't even know he had any creative potential <laughs> to add that. I uh, I recognized him as kind of more of a loner and a lost soul, or whatever you want to say. And he would kind of be, yeah, alone on the bus. And so, I mean, I seen a couple of my friends, you know, throwing paper wads and shit at him. And I was like, no, dude, like, this isn't cool. So one day, I, I just decided to do it out of randomness to uh, sit next to him. So I just sat next to him, started talking to him. Uh, see who he really was, and it turned out he was a really nice guy, and he had a lot to offer for a band, and, uh, and, you know, when people started realizing that, I mean, I remember one day in the hall, when me and you walked next to each other, uh, guy stopped Mike and asked, you know, you're the dude that can scream, right? Remember yeah. that dude? Yeah. yeah, I remember that. I mean, the, vo the, the, um, the truth started coming out that we had musical potential, but it never really got anywhere with a uh, school or, uh, was playing at the school. Or, no, I didn't. no, it, it could have, but I'm not exactly sure they would have liked our stuff. <laughs> <though. laughs> right, we would probably been kicked off, yeah. And uh, considering that it is a public school, yeah, oh yeah, we would have been kicked off. But <clears throat> I suppose what we have to offer would be to, you know, um, it's up to the fans who want to listen. You know, it, it's definitely, definitely it. It's always about the fans that play a big role in a band coming up, you know, if you, if you don't have fans, you don't have a band, you know, basically. You might have a band to be able to play here and there, but if you don't have enough fans to be able to back your... The band will end up dying. Yeah. I mean, there have been a lot of good bands over the years who have died, and, I mean, even like, 
people who should have gone on and lived a successful, fulfilling life have even died, uh, like Jimi Hendrix in 1970 from a drug overdose. That can just go to show you, you know, um, what the world of the rock and roll can do to somebody, and especially in the drugs and alcohol front, he, uh, I guess he didn't have the right person there next to him saying, hey dude, you took too much, or hey dude, maybe you shouldn't mix this with that, and there we go with Jimi Hendrix, and now we don't have him, right? Imagine what he could have done in the 70s. <laughs> we'll never know now. So that's my perspective on that kind of drug front, where as uh, I've already had my overdose experience a couple times, you know, that uh, it uh, really got a hold of me in a um, general sense. And I mean, even in today's world, uh, there's, there's times that I'll find myself, you know, down and out. But the real thing about it is um, it, it doesn't matter you know, like the Beatles say, it doesn't matter if uh, you, you know, as a creative person, use drugs. I mean, it doesn't mean that your fans should use it. Right. That's what, exactly. Yeah, that's what Pink Floyd was going for. Yeah. And, um, and even the Beatles said, you know, Paul McCartney said, he said, uh, you know, I was uh, faced with a decision to either tell the truth or to tell a lie. And the um, interviewer asked him if he had used LSD in his life. And so what did Paul McCartney do? He told the truth. And a couple of weeks later, dude, it made it to the news and people started hating on him. And, uh, you know, saying that he was a bad influence because he did drugs. Well, Paul McCartney goes on to say in another interview that uh, that it shouldn't be um, like uh, his influence that would make somebody to use drugs. It would be somebody's decision themselves. Right, to use it would be their own choice. Right that he really actually didn't want the fans using it, that, uh, he said it doesn't matter, you know, like, the fans shouldn't even be using it, it's illegal, and right. et cetera. So that's, um, <clears throat> that's our fun thing here. So, well, at least part two for, uh, most part, and, uh, probably have a couple videos from today or something, maybe, of some bits from, uh, this. <laughs> so that's, that's that. Um,